Hey guys, welcome to this video. And in this video, we are going to get started with the video upload file. I know in the last video I had said a few things in here, but uh, I was continuing to make I was continuing making videos, but the issue was the videos went a bit longer than we than I expected them to be. And the thing is, this video upload section took me a very long time, a few hours. So that's why I thought no. It's not going to be that way. I will roll back and I will just remake the video. So yeah, here I am remaking the video. <laughs> I came from experience now, so yeah, now everything should be good. We're gonna do quite a funny things, kind of good things. Not a, not really much funny, to be honest. Okay, first of all, we set up a multi file uploading system. I'll say constant. Okay, first of all, before setting up this video upload system, we're gonna do a few changes in this content video upload. Dot JSX. If you might find a few changes, please know the changes by yourself. I cannot be, uh, you know, I don't know if there's any changes. But here, this change is this value set values has this title and description. You need to make sure to put the title and description as this thing, okay? I guess that might be one of the changes. Maybe, I don't know. But I tried to remove all the changes that I did throughout my other videos that I deleted already. So, okay, we're gonna get started. Now, what we are doing here, basically, we're just saying, okay, send this. Axios request to the server and we need to put this thing in a trackage block. I will explain you. I'm gonna get the error. So basically what is happening? Let's say we are not logged in, our access token has expired, but the user is still trying to log in. So they're still trying to upload the file. There are only going to be two things. Once we are uploading the file, you are sending XHR request. So unless until the user will not upload the full file, we cannot actually send him some response back like your cookie has exp your token has expired and we don't want user to you know wait okay so basically what's gonna happen we don't want if the user is uploading a longer videos so we already know his access token has expired and what is going to happen once he uploads the full video waited three hours and video uploading is done he we're we are gonna show him now your access token is expired your uploading is waste well that's the thing there we don't want something like that to happen right so we have one good thing to do okay what we can do basically is first before sending you know was having a track catch block track catch is a, like an additional block so what we're gonna do we will first of all send a renew token request to the server so we'll tell the server yeah we are we want to renew the token to the latest one access token to the latest one so that we make sure the user don't get into such troubles and once we send this request to the server we are going to use the verified token as a middleware and using the verified token middleware we are going to send that user id we're going to read the token first of all before reading the uploading the files we're going to first read his token we do to make sure that 15 minutes don't pass by and we don't miss this token we're going to get his read his token get his id out and pass this id to our actual function which is your video upload function so like that what's going to happen basically user is going to be happy forever <laughs> And so are we going to be happy forever. So what we want to do before doing this thing, we want to have renew token. We're going to import renew token from authentication. We're already doing that here. So we're, what we want to do in the try catch block, we'll say run the renew token function. So basically, renew token function is going to renew our access token. And after renewing that thing, our token, we want to get this data back. Okay? We want to get this data back, and then we're going to do stuff to the data. If nothing, if this thing didn't happen, and then we still got some error, okay? I mean, we will not be getting an error, but who knows? Time will tell that. So we wanna have, we will get the error, and we wanna notify, you know, put up an error inside a notification. So we'll just say, uh, get the notification context, and we will get set notification type. And set notification MSG. I hope I'm doing the right thing. Let me go to the underscore app. Set and type in this. Okay, we're doing the good right thing. All we are going to do here, here we just want to say set notification message is going to be uh, our error. Set notification type is going to be error. Set progress is going to be zero because we want our progress to be all the way zero if something failed. And uh, okay, my little kitten is here. 
meow, meow, meow. And uh, I guess uh, that is, uh, we don't need any to do anything else, right? Okay, good. So that's it for this. And that's for that thing. We are going to do a lot more stuffs. So first of all, let's do one thing. Let me say CD client player yonder. Node one. Okay, we got in some issues. That issue is function got nothing. Okay. Let's set up this video upload function as a blank thing right now. Video upload is going to be a synchronous blank function for now. Like that, I'm gonna say module.exports video upload. Okay. I got a local host before. Right? Okay, we are not logged in. Let's log in. Let's try to upload a video. So we have some kind of display like this. What we want the user to be able to do is close this menu from here. So we may add a close section in here maybe, like this icon, like the icon we had before. Where is the upload videos thing? Here is it. We're gonna say inside here. We'll add a div, and in the div we're gonna have a font awesome icon. Icon is going to be for close. Class name is going to be flex. Justify end. We want it to be within the very really last on the very really right side. And let's do another thing. Let's say for now we don't want this thing to be not video selected because we want to see this thing real quick. Okay, we got something like that, and that's what we wanted. We can increase the size now. You can see class name is going to be text uh, to Excel, and scale is going to be 150, and cursor is going to be pointer. I hope this one do should do it. Okay, now we're gonna have on click function in this one. On click, what we want to do, we want to run function. Set upload D. Fault, I'm going to have set upload, uh, you know, display the faults. We're going to have our set video name to false. Video name to true, uh, null. Set video size to null in case the user might have selected something. Ah, uh, description title is nothing. What else we want to say? Set video selected. False. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. a little bit down I'm gonna say where is it here Set progress to zero. We want the progress to also be nothing once we try to close it. Right? Oh, yeah, that's right. Alrighty, so I hope these things are pretty done for now. I mean, there's a lot we have to do. I will say that. And uh, let's do one other thing. Once we're uploading the video, we want to have something like we're saying. Video name size stuff like that. We can do blah blah stuff like that. Okay, let's never mind that thing. Let's go to video upload section actually. 
less upload and less import fuel average. So to mention, we are using FFMPG, Fluent FFMPG. So to install Fluent FFMPG in a PC, you have to install it in your Windows first of all. So you can just go to Google and search for download FFMPG. And if you want to upload your you know, code somewhere, you have to you know download FFMPG in your local server, wherever you're uploading. If you're using it on a VPS, then like you upload, in, like you install the Node.js, you have to install FFMPG in your server also. And that thing, that thing is important. So now we here just type npmi fluent ffmpeg. So we will be using ffmpeg for probably two things. One thing is for generating thumbnails if the user didn't give thumbnail. Another thing is for generating video previews. Let's say the user hovers over a video. We want to show him a little bit of preview of the video what's inside. So we can do that using the fluent ffmpeg thing. And I think that's pretty much it what we are going to do using fluent ffmpeg. And yeah, I already installed it though. For the package JSON. Okay, we need to uninstall un 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 two things. Uh, Rimref uh, UUID version 4. Uh, express file upload. Uninstall FS extra. And we will use uh, get video duration to actually get the video duration. Okay, you just have to say npmi get video duration. And this thing will actually, you know, get us, help us to get the video duration. Let's say videos are like a few minutes long. And this thing is actually going to uh, get the say video, like the length of the video in seconds. Then we can convert the seconds into minutes, hours, days accordingly. So, yeah. That's pretty, pretty much it, and I think we already installed Molter though. Okay, we're good to go. Now here we're gonna say first of all constant Molter is going to be required. Uh, Molter, and I made a change, few changes in the video section here. Instead of saying video path, we're saying video name and thumbnail name because we just wanna give them the, give the name in here, and we're also gonna say. video preview is going to be type string and required is true and unique is also true okay so that's all the for the video preview name probably like video preview is going to be the name of the path alrighty Description is type string. You can call it like this also. I guess other things are pretty much okay. Okay. Now let me just say here, getting multer here. I'm gonna say constant ffmpeg is going to be equal to require. Doing the ffmpeg const fs is equal to require. File system const uh, get Video length is going to be equal to require get video duration. Get video duration in seconds. That's the only function it has, I guess. And uh, we're gonna use what else? Maybe we'll import the video. Video save is going to be required. model slash video and in the validation in the validation we'll make a okay I deleted that because we need to make new I will make a, a new folder for video and I will make a new file for video upload.js and here we're going to have video upload and here we're gonna ask for user for the Title title is going to be required and the description is not actually going to be required. So we're just gonna say yeah, title is must. User has to give us title. So that's the only thing we're gonna have here basically. Okay, good. And even though in the video below JSX we don't want the user to proceed further if it doesn't have the title. Let's have a check for that. Let's say if Values.title 
is equal to empty is not equal to empty then I want to just say get this thing otherwise I want to say return or what I was want to say this error thing and return with that thing okay same goes for the video thing if video file dot file zero is not if video dot file dot file is not there is there then I wanna just say uh, you get it otherwise we'll just say the same thing video is needed for uploading title is required for uploading and we're gonna say here uh, in, in with the title thing required yeah we're gonna say something like required okay just to make it stand out a little bit okay so I guess you already you might have known this we have added a, a transition with five and run MS linear to the progress bar and this progress bar is just basically this progress bar uh, which one where is our progress bar here I added a progress bar so yeah that's also a thing if you consider that as a thing okay good So we had done a little bit of the setups from that section, and I think we are good to go with that thing. Now let's set up our Malter. First of all, I'm gonna say set up a storage. We'll say Malter. The text storage is going to contain two things. First of all, the file name. Okay, it's gonna say like it's going to contain a request, a file, and a callback function. going to contain something like that a callback function is just going to be a function that we're going to call back later on so basically we'll say here we'll put some other condition let's say constant video extensions is going to be either dot mp4 dot avi dot mkv dot mpeg dot flv we'll also say constant path is going to be equal to require path and we will also say constant uuid generator is going to be actually require crypto dot random bytes random uuid so this function is actually going to generate random UUIDs all the time. Okay? Good. We need random UUIDs to mention that. So on the top, we need first of all the destination. Then we need the file name. So destination is going to be where we want to get these things to get stored. Okay? So destination is going to get the same thing. Request file and a callback function. I'm gonna say if uh what are we gonna say if file dot field name if video extension dot includes our field name Then I want to do something. Otherwise, I want to do something else. I'm going to have a field name for the image. Image extensions is going to be .jpg .jpg 
dot png mvp and dot what else the png png formats we have dot tiff else if image extensions dot include our file dot field name not actually field name field name is going to be like image slash that this slash that we want to say if file if it includes the extension when say pass dot ext name of file dot original file so this thing is basically going to get the extension of that file we have to say this if this is the case then what we want to do we want to have a uh, callback function first of all null and then our folder name is going to be storage we're going to make a folder with storage slash uh, videos storage slash thumbnails I hope that's the thing storage slash videos thumbnails okay I guess that's it for the destination section now we are going to be go inside the file name section inside the file name section what we're gonna do when I have a we're gonna rename the file something. So let's say first of all that image ID is going to be our UUID generator. Uh, is going to get a random UUID, which means a unique ID. Same for the video, and then I'm gonna say basically. Okay, what do we wanna do here? We wanna call. We wanna have a callback function. So we we'll say same thing. If the extensions the name dot includes that thing, what I want to do, I want to say, uh, do a callback function, null, and now here we want to have our file name that is basically going to be video ID plus uh, what do we want to have here? Plus our extension name. Of file dot original name else if image extension includes this thing now I want to have here image ID instead of having the video ID kind of the same thing right and now here we'll say if request dot on uh, aborted Basically, we're saying if the connection was, you know, tampered with, if the user stopped the connection, something like that happened, then what we want to do, we want to actually delete the files. Okay? How do we delete the file? We can delete the file using FS file system. We'll say just the same thing. If it was the video, then what we want to do, we want to say uh, fs.unlink. We want to give the Okay, let's give backticks. Uh, storage slash videos slash our video ID with our uh, file with our file extension name of the file that original name. It's going to give us a callback function. It's going to be an error. If error, then I want to say return with the console the log of that error. Otherwise, we want to say console the log video deleted. We'll just say the same for the other thing also. We'll just say else if it was image extension that we want to say here thumbnail instead. Thumbnail extension. I want to be a little bit more specified. Oh, uh, then we'll say 
thumbnail deleted. We want to delete that thumbnail, right? And here we'll say uh, request it on aborted. We want to create a full look. Look, there's a thing. If we are directly trying to delete the file, we're directly saying, "Yeah, delete this video file." The file, video file, will not be deleted. Okay. First of all, we need to stop the connection. We need to stop the connection between the video and the server. We'll break the connection and then we'll delete. So we'll say if file.stream.on we're on the end request, then I want to do these things. And here at the end, we're going to say file.stream uh, string uh, dot emit. Okay. Dot emit end. I want to force end to the. I want to force uh, the end request. So basically, it will just do they, you know close the connection between the video and the file, and then basically it can easily delete the video on the audio thumbnail itself. And then we're gonna have a portal. We will have the last request is going to be request that on finish. If the, everything was successful, now we wanna have we wanna generate a new ID for both of them, both of these things. Okay. Thumbnail ID is going to be this, and the uh, video is going to be your ID generator. Okay, so we gave both of them a new one, and I guess that is pretty much it for the story section. Okay, good. Okay, we got the storage now. We need to say. What we have here? Okay, we'll just set up uh, our upload part. We'll say constant upload is going to be. It's going to be kind of like a middleware, but we will not put it as a middleware because we will not be having our managing our request here. So we'll say constant upload is going to be multi function. It's going to have first of all storage. It's going to have storage as storage, or we can basically just say storage. Then it will have the file filter function. We will have the file filter function. I didn't create it yet. I'll say constant file filter. This is going to be a function, so I'll pass a function to it. I'm not sure yet file filter will take what. I uh, will have to Google it to be honest. But yeah, that's pretty much okay. We can also have a limits here. Okay, we have your file size limit also, right? Build the name size, file size limit. How many files you can have that limit also? File size maybe takes file as bytes. So we'll say maximum file should be about like one meg one gigabyte. So maybe our bytes which is going to be one byte is when we multiply it into hands and uh, what do we say KB is going to become one KB now we want it to be one uh, MB then one GB oh we can just say this thing is easy as okay, go. Uh, thousand to the power of three Yeah. Do I go anywhere? Okay. Now we'll say dot fields here because we want multiple fields there. Okay. Now here we want to first of all fill with the name of. Videos and it's going to have a max count of one. We only want one file with the name of video, and we'll have another file with the name of thumbnail. Max count is going to be one, and that's it for the field section. And for the file filter, we will do a little search of file filter in Malter. Okay, 
on file upload start <coughs> they're just verifying the types but I guess this is all old post right we can have file filter instead we're gonna have function of request file and callback request file and callback so what do we get here we basically get we're gonna check for the extension type we're gonna get the file the original name and I'm gonna say this 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 okay I get it so I'm gonna say kinda like the same thing we did here if uh, video exists includes our file the original name the extension of that thing we wanna send a callback function with a true thing here just as an extra thing else I wanna say okay we can do like that otherwise send else if this if any of them match it we wanna send back some kind of request okay one second let me think what we can do here. Uh, VPS. If extension only this, then we're going to return that callback, this callback, that callback. Righty. So we're just saying uh, callback true. Know, kind of like it else itself. Um. Uh, no, this is a little bit confusing. So we want to send back the true callback function only if the file exists. And a fall this callback function if it doesn't. Else you wanna say, otherwise we're gonna just say callback null and false. The verification has been failed. It didn't pass any of them. Okay, that seems good. Seems reasonable to me. I'm not sure it's gonna work or not, but I mean we can try though. That's our file filter thing, that's what limits, that's our max count. And yep, we are good to go probably. And then in the verify token, basically what I'm doing here, I'm just saying get the user thing. We don't need the user actually. We're saying get the J JWT. And then, okay, guys, so yeah, I'm back now. What are you happening here? We're just sending the, we're just here saying, yeah. Get the access token from request headers uh, headers authorization. So well here currently we're not sending some headers like that, right? Or maybe we are sending some kind of headers. I didn't notice that before. I didn't told you about that thing before, okay? Okay, here we are sending authorization bearer. You may not notice this thing before. So what is happening here? We're sending multipath form dash data. We need to set another Header also with the name of authorization. We will not be sending this access token as a cookie, but more like as authorization. We need to say bearer and then our access token. We will get our access token from our authentication context. Okay, we're just putting your access token and in the verified token. We're just saying, first of all, if there's no authorization, we will send back like a bad request, it will just fail the request basically. But we are sending it, so basically, we're just saying 
split at the, at the space where the space is we want to split into into two area one area will have the bearer one other another one will have our actual token we want to select the index one which will have the actual an access token and we want to say if there is no access token we're going to say some back we'll say access token not found and we'll just return back otherwise we're just saying user id is going to be we'll verify the access token using jwt so we want to make sure the the decoder type is a is not we're saying if the decoder type is not equal to a which means access token he's trying to use refresh token instead we want to set back null or if the token has expired we want to set back and send back null others will send back the token id if uh, user id is equal to null which means it's not uh, true then we want to send back a response like 403 maybe and we want to say json status 2 access token renewal needed something like that okay and then we have the request of user id is this thing we're setting we're saying request of user id is equal to user id dot id so basically whatever id we got decoded from here which is same we get in a kind of like a variable stuff we're creating a new value we're creating a, creating a new uh, key for the creating a new object for the request uh, request uh, we're creating a new value for the request key with the name of user id and the value is going to be user id dot id and then we're just returning next which means yeah you can just go ahead so how will we be doing uh, you know managing the stuff we're just saying import this thing in here in the index we'll just say put verified token as a middle in here we just will we'll put to verify token in here and after that we'll put video function video upload so what's going to happen when, once we make some request to the video upload it is going to send the request to the verified token and after verified token we'll do here return next it will send that request to that video upload itself to this function basically so here we need to say okay here we need to say first of all let's get the user id that we know we are, we are having user id constant user id is going to be called the request huh? user id and then we we need to call the upload function basically once we get the upload function it will have the request response and the it will have an error okay if something happened if error happened once we return uh, basically something happened error I'll just not say return, I'll say console the log error. Return console log error. If not, we wanna move ahead. And now what we wanna do here, we're gonna say first of all, let's see if our request the body is correct or not. So a constant title is going to be request dot body dot title basically, something like that. And then we're gonna we will be importing a validator. Constant validate is going to be equal to require validation slash video slash video upload constant invalid is going to be equal to validate our title or more likely to guess the body itself. Here we'll get the title in the description. So we're saying if invalid, then I say return with the response of JSON. It's going to, it's not going to actually happen because we already make the check in the front end. So we're just saying, uh, still status zero. And I say it's going to be invalid. Whatever invalid function we get back. We want to call this thing afterwards. And now we're saying there is no issues. Alrighty, so we get this thing. Now, what we want to do afterwards? We're saying, yeah, we got the both the things. Then, what about we gonna do? Okay, we're gonna have uh, another thing as here. Constant select so has uh, has thumbnail is going to be by default false. And in the storage, if we got the thumbnail. We'll say has thumbnail is going to be true again. Okay. Good. That's what we are saying. And after getting this title and description, 
what we want to do we want to do a lot of stuff but we have to first of all check if what we did till now is actually working or not so we'll say response to json uh, status test verified here we want to accept the request we'll say the structure of the data first of all we're using data dot data actually we'll say if data dot status which means the response was in uh, zero then what we want to do we want to say basically as data dot message do these things otherwise what we want to do Success progress should become a hundred percent as as by default. We want to do a lot more things, but for now we will not do anything. Okay, and uh, we want to do few things. We want to change few things here. The start upload button should be changed actually once the progress started. If progress is greater than zero, then we want to have something. If not, then we now have something else. Something else is going to be this button. Well, the progress has not been started yet. But if the progress did started, we want to first of all remove the, remove the function. Okay, we want to say do, 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 do. we want to remove it as a button. We want to say call it as a div. Uh, okay, I'm gonna say here for now. Loading. Nice. Here instead of having this thing, we're gonna have another thing also. I'm gonna say if progress is uh, greater than zero, I wanna show that thing. Others, I don't wanna show that thing. And that thing is just basically going to be another div class. Anyway, one. Hey, can you see it then? I'll say estimated. Hey, then eh? Zero, you see it then? Huh? Okay, we're gonna say this thing. What else do we need? What else do we need? We need to test now. I need. I know we can have a lot of bugs, but bugs are something that creates the file. It's my joke. Okay. Let's change this thing to if the video is not selected. Let's do a refresh. Choose a video and title. Title is going to be test thumbnail. We're going to choose the thumbnail. We're going to say. This is going to be our thumbnail. If I do a start, what's going to happen? I don't know. Description is not allowed. Okay, we need description. So they did a lot. Uploaded the video though. What about thumbnails? Yeah, they did uploaded the thumbnail also. Congratulations, guys. Let's go, guys. So we didn't say one thing. We said if invalid, then we wanna, I want to send back the response, invalid stuff like that. But before sending the response, like invalid stuff, I want to delete the files, okay? I want to delete both of the files. I want to say if has thumbnail is not there. Then I want to say fs.unlink. Uh, unlink the... story slash videos slash now how will we get the what do we say the video in the thumbnail you may you may ask that so actually we'll get that video file name in the request so we can just say constant uh file name as video name is going to get request.files 
and then we'll have the dot video. In the first index will have the file name actually. So we'll have request of files. Dot video. The dot video is actually what we are having the name here. We'll also have the dot thumbnail, but we will not, you know, I do it like this because what if the user didn't give any thumbnail? I know they he will give it for now because we didn't make any auto generated thumbnail stuff. But we have to say what if, okay? What if he didn't give the thumbnail? So that we have to make conditions for that also. So let's say for now, let's only do. Our videos and then we have the video name if, uh, if the thing is not there if there is no thumbnail otherwise I want to remove both of them it will return as an error and I will say if error console log error Oh, we don't. We don't have to say if. It's error. In console log. Error. Otherwise, nothing. Let's do a little bit copy pasting. Now we know that if this is the case, if we have a thumbnail, then what we want to do? We want to just say, yeah, do this for the video name, and we we'll do for. Thumbnails. So we're gonna have here request dot files dot uh, thumbnail at the index of zero dot file name. We're gonna just remove them. And I wanna say, yeah, return this thing. You don't deserve it. Something like that. So basically, you can see we did got those things in the thumbnails. Let's make a request again. We know this is a wrong request, but we'll still make it. Let's say start upload. Description is not allowed, and we can see here they are automatically delete the video and the thing because we have made the system here, and that's a good thing. Now let's say yeah, we are getting the description also. Description okay. It's going to be joy or string type. It just we just say just gonna say description should exist there. You don't care if it's string if it's something. If it's nothing, that's not your duty, okay? It should just exist. It's not your matter, my boy. Okay. Now let's try to make a request again. Let's say start uploading. Test verified, and that's a good thing. It got from zero to hundred person. Our both things got to be uploaded. Our thumbnail got uploaded, and uh, our videos got uploaded, right? So you can see both have the same name because we are saying we're calling the function right here. We'll say UUID generator. It's a UUID dot random dot random dot random dot random. So to make sure it generates random for both of them, not just assigning the same thing again and again. Okay. Well, let's try it now. That's a refresh. I'm gonna upload a video really quick with a thumbnail. Test. Start uploading. Okay, we got something issue. Uh, video upload. UUID generator. UUID is not defined. Oh, we're just saying UUID though. Happy now? Start upload. Test verified. Uploaded was done. We get. You can see now we get different IDs for both of them because first we will just as we we're calling the function, we we're assigning the value to a variable. Now we are just calling the function all the time, and we even will have the uh, access to the functions here. Now, if I still try to make a mistake, I still try to not give it the test. If we still have to do the test, I somehow managed to bypass my thing. I know I will not be able to do that anyway. But I'm just saying as an example, just actually test if our things are working fine. I'll get thumbnail, cannot read properties of undefined. Here we need to say same thing for the thumbnail. It's our choice. We give the thumbnail or not give the thumbnail.
if thumbnail.files is present then only I want to have this thumbnail otherwise we'll say nothing I will say nothing let me do a upload of the video let me say start upload battle is required for uploading ah, I know that let me delete this old videos I just want to show you if even we have different IDs this thing will start still not break and it will still return the good thing let me say description is not there and I want to send something test to the thumbnail let me just start upload description is not there and boom you saw we just deleted those things and that's good that means we don't really much it doesn't really much matter to us whatever we're doing it will still do the things the way it has to okay good now what we are gonna do once we get the response some response back let's say success video has been uploaded what we wanna do when it is set progress to uh, zero uh, set upload D to false set the video selected to false mm, set values to empty I will say title is going to be empty description is going to be empty set video name is going to be null set video size is going to be null so basically I'm just making sure that when I close that thing I just want to make sure that all of these things go to default position again okay I don't want to just uh, keep them I don't want to keep my updated value there that's the main um, uh, motive of this thing So I can just commit them out. I hope you did record the point what I wanted to say. And uh, yeah, that was it for this video. In the next video, we are going to add a few more functions to it. We're gonna add the uh, video length, uh, get length of the video from the video, and we'll add if there is no thumbnail, we want to auto generate the thumbnail. And then in the next videos, we'll be adding the get the video previews and much more stuff. So I will see you in the next one. Have a nice day, and stay tuned.